السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المسلمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أبي رضي الله أما بعد in the name of Allah the most merciful the graceful the cherishing and the nourishing Creator honorable chair of this gathering dignitaries and the patrons of this letter it feels immense honor and pleasure to be with you all on this glorious day of Eju Feast 2019. And on this day, I'd like to gather your thoughts on a notable and a conspicuous topic, the perspective of Islam on human rights. Dear friends, we are living in an age that is trying to its unprecedented technological sophistication. But unfortunately, the prejudices the inequities that have plagued the human race historically still continues to exist and are responsible for untold human sufferings. It's in this context, the topic of human rights is especially pertinent. What constitutes human rights? Can we come to common understandings of liberties and thereby ensure every single individual in our society is being treated as equals? These questions have also been the main subjects of historic documents such as Magna Carta, the French Declaration of Rights of Man, the American Bill of Rights, and the Geneva Convention. What's often overlooked, however, is that these questions have also been addressed by various religious traditions. The Islamic model of human rights, in particular, is striking its rigor, vision, and relevance to the modern community. The most distinguishing feature of human antithesis manners in Islam is that they are based on a broader practice of faith, deeds, and social behaviors which Muslims believe are divinely mandated. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, God commands justice, doing good and generosity towards relatives. And he forbids what is shameful, blameworthy, and oppressive. He teaches you so you may take the heed. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the last prophet of Islam, established the very first Islam society which completely eliminated social and spiritual problems rampant in the Arabian Peninsula. Freedom of religion was instituted in Medina. Women were honored, respected, and treated as equals. Tribal warfare were replaced with united ties of brotherhood. Urusri and alcohol were completely forbidden. As said by Canon Armstrong, a renowned author on the book's comparative religion has said that Muhammad was a darling success, both spiritually and politically. And took Islam from strength to strength and to strength. Islam's contribution to human rights is best appreciated when we against the current backdrop of the world history and the realities of the modern times. The social, the racial, the gender, religious inequalities continue to exist in our societies. Social and economic disparities have led to oppression of people of lower classes. Racial prejudice have led to enslavement and subjugation of people of darker skins. Women have been mistreated by the chauvinistic attitudes and the persuasive attitudes of religious, religious stability have led to widespread subjugation of people of different beliefs. And this is the realities of the modern times. The diversity of humanity in the race and ethnicities is a testament of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's majesty and wisdom. And therefore, racial discrimination is completely forbidden in Islam and contradicts its essence. And this concept is further exemplified by the final sermon of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who proclaimed, no Arab has any superiority over a non-Arab, nor does a non-Arab have any superiority over an Arab. Nor does a white has any superiority over a black, or a black has any superiority over a white man. You're all children of Adam, and Adam and Islam was created from clay. Dear friends, Islam has rights and responsibilities divinely mandated on every single individual in their respective roles as spouse, parent, children, relative, friend, or even a foil. And these, and these distribution of rights and responsibilities have led Islam to address the social, racial, gender, and secretarial issues plaguing our global societies. And this Islamic law has the potential and capability to make reforms and revolutionize mankind. By bestowing this peaceful message of Islam, let me conclude my words. Wa akhir da'wan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.